Thank you. Okay, uh, this talk is called How to Le Start a Commune, uh, but could just as easily be called How Not to Start a Commune. If you were imagining I was an expert or a theologian, then I'm very sorry I'm not. Uh, but what I do have is a year's experience of um, having some ideas, getting together with some friends, and trying to live them out. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit of the journey of how that happened and some things I've picked up, some things I've learned over the last year. It started 18 months ago. Uh, we got together at an event called Dreams. It was an open mic in Durham City in the north, um, and people across the city came together and shared dreams they had, uh, things they wanted to see in the area, kind of big vision stuff. And at the time, I was working for a church. I was doing quite a lot of community outreach, but it would be the kind of thing where you go along for a couple of hours uh, and you know, be with the people and then go back to your cosy home and uh, <laughs> make sure it doesn't affect your life too much. And it was all loving in a way that was really efficient and really convenient. And I found myself just being so frustrated and thinking, the way I love people is, is so tailored to me. And uh, I got up at this event and said something which now I think back on is quite embarrassing <laughs> because it was a group full of people who had started these amazing projects and hostels and ministries and churches. And I said, uh, so guys, I've, I've read this book. It's called Acts. It's, it's after the Gospels. They shared stuff and helped the poor. I mean, is anyone... I think ooh, doing that, I mean... Because if I'm honest, I think we've probably all got it wrong a bit. <laughs> Who's with me? Um, but as kind of my experience has been, um, when you do that and have kind of mis slightly misguided and naive activism, um, God just really, really honours it. And there were people there who uh, came together who had better ideas and better resources. And six months later, we moved into our community house, number 25, and we made these big mind maps about how we were going to live uh, sustainably and share the things we had. Uh, we have morning prayer every morning, the house is open to people, we have um, open meals and open rooms, we um, share bedrooms so that we can fund a spare room, uh, which is kind of available to anyone who needs it. We call it uh, sometimes like a micro hostel, like a really tiny version, aka a family. Um, and so that brings me to tip one, or kind of first thing I've learned. The only difference between a stone-cold nutter and a social entrepreneur is the sharing of ideas. And that is actually quite hard for um, millennials like me because we grew up, particularly in the church, with these awful, awful posters of cats hanging off branches that says stuff like, hang in there, and that one, you know, with the footsteps and Jesus and always going to carry you. And so the idea that you might come out and your friends and say, guys, I want to change the world, feels really, like, awkward and moronic, and you feel like someone is going to be waiting to say, oh, put it on a poster of a cat on the internet, you idiot. Um, but the way that you start things, the way that you get things going is by just swallowing uh, that kind of awkwardness about really, really bold chat and um, kind of getting on with it. Something I've learned and continue to learn often is um, to be so patient. Uh, the first few months of our community, I'd made these bold claims and I was expecting really instantaneous returns. And what we had was... Uh, a housemate who was really ill, who we were looking after, and a string of my unemployed graduate friends, and a couple of events that were just really badly attended, and I just thought, oh my gosh, I've got this all wrong. <laughs> this has not come out immediately like I wanted it to. I've made a big mistake. Um, but just wait it out uh, and trust, and you know, it did happen, it just took a while. Um, that's another kind of thing of our generation. If it doesn't happen now, you think, oh gosh, I'll move on to something else. Uh, this is something which was particularly painful for me to learn because I think part of me likes to think I'm a bit cool, uh, but when you live in a community house, leave your street cred at the door. <laughs> um, the times when I think, oh, I'm going to have a nice night, I'm going to make my own hummus, and I'm going to Instagram it, I'm going to have around my friends and drink nice wine, uh, inevitably, those are the nights where someone gets pooed on by a magpie and then is subjected to a really lengthy discussion about why Jesus would beat the devil in an arm wrestle, and you think, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's gone wrong? Um, which brings me quite neatly onto another big learning for this year. Uh, being out of your comfort zone and out of your depth is the core of what it means to be incarnational. I'll give you a, a snapshot. 
Last week I was on my way to work, I had a friend staying, and I left her in the room, our room and said, uh, oh yeah, see, I'll see you after work. I came downstairs into the kitchen, somewhere I didn't really know was sat at the kitchen table eating cornflakes out of a Tupperware box. I said, oh, I'm, it's morning, I'm really sorry, I'm off to work. And as I got to the door, this really big tattoo-chested traveller guy comes in the door and says, morning, and Chris, a, a homeless guy who was at the moment, um, came out of his room in his box and went, Mim! Can you find me some trousers? And I just thought, everyone, leave me alone, I'm going to work. Like, life is chaotic. And the truth is, if you invite people with um, quite chaotic lives into your home and into the way you live, your life is going to become really chaotic. I've hosted stone-baked pizza parties with groups of ex-convicts. I have co-parented and conducted a funeral for a magpie, taught ukulele lessons to the homeless. I found myself genuinely saying once, do not dry your hands on my pumpkin. Life is chaotic and it's messy. Um, and if you open your house, that's how it's going to be. Um, very unavoidable. It's also deeply, deeply unglamorous. I'm, I love a bit of a blog and Instagram. I love things I can tweet. Uh, but I spend hours and hours washing up. Uh, I change sheets like I run a hotel. And all of it is, is so unglamorous and so messy, um, but so essential. Something else that has been, yeah, really important in kind of how, how to start something, particularly when you've got all these big dreams, um, is something that I wrote in my diary really early on. It's across two pages and it just says, we already have a saviour, we don't need another one. And for us, particularly if you're, uh, you're kind of a talented, well-educated child, you grow up and people tell you, oh, you're really adequate, anything you want to do, you can do it. And that's not quite true because the fact is, you know, we are inadequate. And the idea of community is just built on the principle that individually we are totally inadequate. Um, so if you want to start a community or start a project with the idea that you're going to uh, go in and change things and save things, like get ready to be disappointed. So share your ideas, be patient, be out of your comfort zone, leave your street cred at the front door and do it together. And be comforted because the history of our faith and of justice is one of imperfect kinos whose big ideas are ill-matched by resource and ability. So get on with it. <laughs> Thanks.